Hello everyone and welcome to the next video about Questmaster's Early Access. By the time I was making this video, the game will be currently on Early Access. So now guys, I want to share this little update that they made this week. Okay, so let me pull off it real quick to check the update. This game was updated yesterday. So allow me to uh, share this guys. We are now introducing the coin pedestals, which means you can actually um, buy items using purple coins, which is the uh, sword coins. So get enough coins, you're able to buy the item from the pedestal, which is uh, pretty neat. So uh, the next thing is we got the new addition to the coin counterpart. Which is the shield coins. In other words, basically it was it's just like um it's just like Ocarina of Time where you have to collect uh five silver rupees to make the doors appear or get an item. So it actually works this way in this game. Um get many coins in one room, the door would either open or have a chest appears right in front of you, which is pretty neat. So next we got the new new dungeon stat, which is the average completion time. Uh, I haven't got into that little information yet, but from the looks of it, it'll tell you on the specific dungeon you're playing on uh, how long it will take you to finish the dungeon, which is pretty neat actually. It'll help the players how long it will take them to complete, whether it's uh, whether it's hard <laughs> or it's downright easy. So, uh, the next thing we got here is the physics engine re re refactor. So, um, it says here the entire physics engine has been refactored to operate frame rate independently, meaning you can now safely run the game at lower frame rates without breaking physics. Ah, more like um, if your machine is not powerful enough to handle the game all well, the game will net won't won't may not won't um how can i say this it won't longer break the game for you because it'll match your frame rate of your current system so that way you don't clip through the walls or anything like that so the next one we got here is the text skip settings uh now we have the ability to skip the text entirely, whether you're trying to uh, leave the dungeon or exit the game or prepare to um, uh, beat your own dungeon in order to upload your dungeon. All sorts of stuff, so that's pretty handy. And of course we got the reduced flashy mode, which is very handy for people who are very sensitive to lights. So that way you don't see constant flashing during the warp zones, like warp to a different area of the dungeon, you no longer have to worry about it, so you have the ability to turn it off, thankfully. And last but not least, we got switches. Now they have conditions. That's very handy, so when you uh, press down a switch or anything, the next switch will appear right in front of you, which is very useful actually to make your own uh, convoluted contraption <laughs> so that being said let's go ahead and delve into the dungeons so i can explain and show you guys what they did what they added so we're gonna go to new okay so we're here we're gonna make another room so i can show you guys what they added into the game. So, uh, well, let's not use this. We're gonna use this. We're gonna add this. For demonstration, for demonstration purposes. So, all right, we're gonna add the door here. That way this door will connect to another room. And now we're going to uh, seal the door. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to introduce now is the coins. Uh, 
Uh, here are the coins here. These are the basic purple coins that was added to the, to the early access. As you can see, if you collect many coins of these, um, you can make something happen. It's like this door here, you can make a door open. Uh, here it is. We'll get to this in a minute. So we already know about this little mechanic. Just collect the coins. And the door will open. We already know about that. So we're going to switch this to a blue one. Okay. So uh, continuing with the purple coins. We're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to add the pedest pedestal. Uh, right around here. And then uh, we'll add... We'll add this here. So this will require coins. So we can actually hang on a second. Ah, here are the choices. It'll tell you it'll give you the price on on the coins that the amount of coins you need in order to make a purchase. So let's say we need five purple coins. So we're gonna put some out. Uh, put it here. So what happens when we try to pick up the item here? It won't let us because we need five coins. Oh, and let's not forget, there's a coin counter at the top right corner of the screen as you can see here. Uh, let me... Well, I'll just use my cursor here. Right around here, it will show you the coin counter. As you can see on the screen. So, uh, by the time we collect all five coins... We can finally make a purchase. And there you have it. You just bought yourself a fire rod. Thank you. And be happy about using this. <laughs> so, um... The coins will determine how many coins are in a dungeon. And the max amount that it will be available for you to have. So... You can use that to have the area open the doors or have the switches active. Any sorts of contraptions you can muster. Okay, so that being said, we're done with the purple coins. So now let's move on to the blue coins. Right, maybe I shouldn't have deleted. Okay. So notice that the door closes because you need the amount of coins to appear on the map. So let's say um, we get all the coins around here. Wait, we can get all the coins around here. So let's use the duplicate. Makes it much easier this way. Okay, so you collect all the coins in one room and the door will appear. And just like that. So, um, the only thing you need to know about the, these blue coins can only work in one room at a time. So if you have like multiple rooms, you have to collect the co all the coins within the room. So that's why I made another map here. So let's add another door for a demonstration. So we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, have this under condition. So, we're gonna copy this and see. So here, you, there you go, the door closes up as we add more coins. Now, now let's demonstrate how it's done. Alright, we're moving on to the next room. Same thing. And just like that. Okay, so you're also wondering, how do I make this in Link Ocarina of Time style? Like, you collect Super Rupees one after another? Actually, no. What if you do the Link's Awakening style? Like, you step on the platforms in the level 4 dungeon, the Angler's, um, the Angler's dungeon. I believe we can do that, right? Let's find out. So here's a little demonstration. Okay. 
We're gonna add this. So these two have some sort of a shape conditions, but from the looks of it, I don't think we can actually do it because there's no other shape conditions that we need. So, so it looks like they may have to update this game to have the coins add the shape conditions. But regardless, just collect all the coins within this room and the door will open. Simple as that. Okay, guys, so the next one, um, well, you can actually use the blue coins to make the items disappear. Let me make a quick demonstration. So we don't have to worry about, about this. Let's just make this as a door open automatically and let's use uh, anything. It could be a chest, it could be anything. So I'm going to add this in here and make sure to have it set to to this. So let's collect all the coins. Hey, he just got yourself a fire rod. Or it could be anything. It could be a key or whatsoever. Make your imagination come to life. Alright, so that being said, guys, let's go ahead and move on to the average completion time. So we're going to leave this dungeon. So if we were to go to the billboard, it should tell us the completion time. So these are the dungeons. So... Ah, so there it is, guys. It'll tell you how long it will take you to complete it. Uh, this will show it takes you five minutes to complete this dungeon. This will stay multiple hours. Wow, that's a lot. I can't even. Uh, I can't even imagine it will take you a lot of hours to beat this dungeon. No, it didn't take me that long at all. Must be a bug, but I guess they'll, they'll fix it soon. Alright, that being said, we're going to talk about the physics engine. So, normally you start to spaz out a lot when there's like a lag going on in your game. Well, that got fixed, so that means your contraptions or any of some sort will not break. So, if you have lower end systems, you'll, you'll be fine for now. You'll be fine, definitely. So they actually fixed it. So next, we're going to talk about text, text skip settings. So we have the ability to skip text. So if we go to the options, the settings, and to gameplay, there is a new option here, which is always. So whenever you set this to always, you can just skip right away. Just, just skip right away. When seen, of course, and you don't. If you don't want to skip text, just skip to never. But for me, I'll I'll just keep it on as always. So um, next, we got reduced flashing mode. So if we go to gameplay here, I have mine set off because I'm actually used to flashing. It doesn't bother me. But but for people who that does bother them doesn't like flashing um you can just set this to on it'll ease your your eye sensitivity so that way it doesn't you don't go get seizure or anything like that so you'll be good as long as you have that reduced flashing on so uh that being said ah the switches are now conditional i forgot to show you guys about it so uh let's go back Let's go back here. We're gonna go here. So they made a little demonstration. Uh, we're gonna copy the exact demonstration, but... So, 
Uh, just like before, you can actually set this to shapes or any other condition that requires. But for me, I would recommend using shapes for this one. Now, we got that set. Now let's add different uh, contraptions. I'm going to add this. So now they have this. We can actually make it appear. Uh, we can also add this. Have that with the shapes as well. I'm pretty sure they did add this as well. Yes, they did. And of course we have this. This will also appear. What about the wall switch? Do they also have that too? Oh, unfortunately they don't have the the wall switch chain thing. What a what about these? Do these have that as well? No, they don't. So, these are the four available ones that you can have. And if you go here, they will appear. And it'll disappear. Of course, when you hit those switches, they'll stay active. Unless you use the, the res uh, reset rooms uh, button. So yeah, it's actually pretty handy. This is very handy to have if you want to make your dungeon uh, advanced. So go crazy about it. <laughs> well, that will be all for the demonstration, guys. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of this of this uh, this week's update. Uh, feel free to experiment your dungeons with these new um, conditions on switches, like to make these appear and uh, disappear, or however. However you want to set. Okay. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, we're hoping for a next weekly update. Which is next Friday. And I'm sure I'll be able to bring you guys the video about it. So guys, thank you for watching. If you want to check this game out. It's available on Steam for $19.99. And it's currently on Early Access. This game will be updated weekly and also there's a roadmap for monthly updates so i can't wait to show you guys what it will contain in the next the next upcoming weeks and months anyway guys take care and i'll see you next time